Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to keep a running total of the events that happen in each current uh, in each current cell. So when you press F9 and you see the dance of the ones popping around, very, very cool, exceptionally cool. If you hold down F9 and let it kind of do its thing, you'll, you'll notice that the no red cards and five red cards happen, but nowhere near as frequently as the one and four happen, and those nowhere near as frequently as the two and three. And that's great. The problem, of course, is that we need a way of actually collecting that data rather than just noticing it. I mean, as statisticians, you're trained to look for that. You're trained to recognize that. As students of statistics, our students might not. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a cumulative column. And what this cumulative column is going to do is it's going to keep track of what's actually happening in those current columns. And here is the first time you're actually going to see the iterative or recursive nature of the uh, of Excel at work. So here's a cool little iterative or recursive formula and you'll see why it's called that. In cell uh, E7, let's type equals. Now it's going to be a conditional. If, left parentheses, D7 equals zero, comma, E7, comma, E7 plus 1, right parentheses. Now I'm going, to I'm going to press enter on this, and we're going to go up here and look at that formula again. Well, that's a cool outcome. We got all five red. Pretty slick. Very rare. So what this cell formula is telling us to do, it's say, okay, Excel, I want you to look over at D7, and I want you to do one of two things. If the value that's in cell D7 is 0, which means if in this current experiment I didn't get any red cards, I want you to add this number, or, or augment or increase this number by 1. If this number is a 0, leave this number exactly as it is. So what you can do is you can hold down F9 here and let it play through for a while. And what you'll notice is every time the current pops a 1 in cell D7, which means we get a trial where there actually is uh, a, uh, excuse me, where there actually are no red cards, that cumulative will pop up by 1. So now it's keeping track of how many trials, as I hold down F9, how many trials there are that exhibit all black cards, no red cards. Okay? Grab that for me. Left click inside E7. Grab that, red, that, uh, that square at the bottom and pull that formula all the way down. And what you now have is you have, it's a, little, it's a little goofy at first because it also populates it with some weird values. But you'll notice as you scroll through the formulas, it'll do the same thing for all the outcomes. We'll deal with the goofiness in a second. So now as you press F9 and hold it down, you'll notice they all update one at a time as the experiment changes. And even though the value started with goofy numbers, which again, we'll deal with momentarily, you're actually beginning to see the behavior of the binomial kicking in. The, the events getting no and or all red cards are rarer than the event of getting one red, four black, four black, one red, excuse me, one red, four black, uh, uh, four red, one black, which are also rarer than getting two and three. So, and also let's add one thing at this point in cell E13, we're going to do a sum, equals sum of the cumulative column. Close that off. This will, keep you a, this will give you a sample size that you can play with. And this will become important later on um, when you want to compare the results of your iterative calculations with the results of the actual binomial that you would get um, uh, traditionally or, or uh, uh, theoretically. Empirically, empirical results here, theoretical results there. So at this point, let's save our work, and then we'll move on to the next step, which will be getting a histogram of these results.